It's a beautiful morning. Today's very nice. We got a few clouds in the sky. It's around 8.30 in the morning. Been walking around the lake for about an hour and a half, taking some photos. Today, I want to share with you two important things that affect your photos in wildlife photography. I've shared in the past how I like using in-camera crop on my Nikon Z6 II when the bird is far or when the bird is small, just to get closer because I feel that there is no difference to in-camera cropping or going home and cropping the same image. When we're using in-camera cropping, we're helping the camera. And a lot of people don't realize that. They just feel, well, you're just cropping in camera just to save some time and you don't want to crop when you get home. Well, yes and no. The Nikon Z6 II is a 24 megapixel camera. When I crop, I get down to around 12 megapixel. But if I go home and I crop a full frame, 24 megapixel down to 12 megapixel, I'm getting the same results as if I'm cropping in the field. Now on the Z6 II, we have four metering modes. We have matrix metering, we have center weighted, we have spot metering, and highlight protection. Wildlife photography, I never use matrix metering. Matrix metering meters the whole frame. That is good for landscapes, but wildlife photography, it's either center weighted or spot. I rarely use highlight protection. And this is where cropping in camera really helps you out for metering. Because understand, if you're not using in-camera cropping, let's say you're just staying in FX mode. So you're shooting at 24 megapixel. You're shooting a very small bird. Well, your AF mode is going to be affected as well, especially if you're using single point, because that single point is quite small. I use single point AF most of the time now, because that gets me the best focusing advantage. I want to talk about using in-camera cropping compared to cropping at home with the three metering modes, center weighted, spot metering, and highlight protection. You might think, well, there's no real difference. Well, there is, because when you're using in-camera cropping, you're cropping in. What happens when you crop in? Let's look between my hands here, and I'm focused on my nose here, and I'm using center weighted. How much of that image is going to be center weighted? This area here. But if I'm out here, how much of the image is going to be centered weighted? A huge area. So there's a lot of shade in the background here. So when I'm using in-camera cropping, there's less shade. So my subject is going to be better metered. I'm going to get a better exposure because there is less shade in the background. Now, I've walked around here and I've taken quite a few photos of the three formats. So I have center weighted, spot metering, and highlight protected, all in in-camera cropping, DX, and in FX. In these examples that I'm going to show you, you'll see how the background of what you're photographing really affects your photos. Now, there is a caveat because when you're using in-camera cropping or when you're cropping at home, the ISO that you're using is going to be magnified. It's still going to be, let's say, ISO 4000, but because you're cropping in, you're going to see more noise. For me, that is not a big deal anymore because I use Topaz Denoise and I find that it does a great job. Even if there's a bit of more grain in the background, more noise, I've got the shot that I want. Let's take a look at these photos. All these photos were not taken in RAW. They were taken in JPEG fine and the picture profile was set to portrait. There was no cropping involved, no further editing. So this first set of images show a Pacific black duck both in FX and in in-camera cropping. The FX full frame is at the top and the in-camera cropping is at the bottom. And we have center weighted on the left, spot metering in the middle and highlight weighted on the right. Now in the video, I did say highlight protected, but highlight weighted and highlight protected basically means the same thing. Take a careful look at these images. It doesn't look like there's much difference between center weighted in full frame and in in-camera cropping. But in in-camera cropping, we can just see a little bit more detail. But in spot metering, there is a huge difference, just like there is in highlight weighted. And this is why I state that most of the time, if my subject is far from me, 
I will use in camera cropping because you cannot replicate this when you get home. You cannot adjust your metering once you're home. If the highlights are blown like it is here in spot, if I'm cropping, I'm still going to get a very bright area compared to the in camera cropping. So these are the two images of the center weighted, both in FX and in DX mode, which is in camera cropping. And look at the difference clearly now. You can see that in the FX mode, the duck's wing is very dark compared to the in-camera cropping. And I'll keep referring now to the DX mode because that's what it's called, DX mode and my Z6 II. There'd be less effort for me to bring out the shadows, which means that I will have less digital noise in my photo. And here, look at the difference between spot metering in FX and in DX mode. The spot metering in FX is really blown out because it's trying to register the dark area. But in DX mode, it's registering. And because we're much closer, even though we're in spot metering, it's balanced out the exposure much better. Now this set of a sacred kingfisher shows you where different metering modes can also affect because like I stated, most of the time I use center weighted. But if I'm faced in a situation like this, I will go to spot metering. I'd rather have the background slightly blown out and my bird or whatever I'm photographing correctly exposed. Here you can see both in FX and in DX mode that center weighted doesn't work, but spot metering works perfectly. Why? Because my subject is quite dark, the background is quite bright. So in center weighted, whether I'm in FX or DX, it still struggles. But in spot, it's saying, yes, this bird is dark. I'm going to bring out the detail in it and the background is going to be blown out. But that doesn't bother me as long as my subject is clearly defined. Also, you can see in highlight weighted, there's not much difference. It looks very similar to center weighted, which is why I stated that I rarely use highlight weighted when I'm photographing wildlife. And here you can clearly see the difference in spot metering between FX and DX mode. Look at the DX mode. The bird is slightly darker, but there is a lot more detail in the image compared to the FX mode. Now, all these photos, you can see the subject is quite far. And this is why I say that I like using DX mode when my subjects are a certain distance from me. Now, this is a water dragon. They're quite common in our area. They like living quite close to waterways and around Lake Eden where these photos were taken. There are like hundreds of these around. And this one was on a termite mount. And look at the difference between center weighted, spot and highlight weighted. Now, if you look at the bottom in the DX mode, can you see that the spot metering is different? And comparing the FX mode to the DX mode, the DX mode is better exposed. The three metering modes have been better exposed and are more even. So this is center weighted. There is not much difference, but in center weighted, I can see a bit more of the background, a bit more of the shadows in this image. The water dragon is not overexposed. It looks very nice. And this is a comparison between FX and DX mode in spot metering of this water dragon. It is slightly underexposed. Everything in the background is quite dark. This is another example of war dragon. Since there was quite a lot, I've used the war dragon as an example three times in this video here. This water dragon here was out in the sun. Center weighted here is slightly blown out. Spot metering is very nice. And highlight weighted is also slightly overexposed. This one here, I really want to show you that sometimes it doesn't matter which mode you're in. Because if your subject and your background is very similar, they're not going to make much difference. And you can see here between center weighted spot and highlight weighted, there's not much difference at all, whether I'm in FX mode or whether I am in DX mode. And this is the cropped in version of the FX mode and the DX mode. And you can see here that there is slightly more noise in the DX mode because I've had to zoom in a bit. So the water dragon has got more noise. But using Topaz Denoise, a lot of that background noise would be removed anyway. Now I've saved the best to last. This is a welcome swallow. And you can see there's not much difference between the FX mode and the DX mode. But can you notice something very clearly here? The background, look how blurred the background is here. And look at the difference here between FX and DX. 
we have a very defined image and we've got a blurred background, which I really like. But to show you that even if you're shooting in FX mode and you crop at home, you're going to end up about the same. This is FX mode on the left, FX mode cropped at home in the middle and the DX mode on the right. Between the FX mode cropped at home and the DX mode cropped in camera, there is very little difference. And this is why I state that really, if your subject is far, why shoot in the FX and crop at home when you can shoot in the DX mode and get the same results and sometimes even better in FX mode because your camera is making it much easier for you. It's metering better. Your exposure is going to be different. All the colors, the highlights are going to be brought out. You're going to end up with a much better image and less editing to be done when you start editing these images. As you've seen in the examples, sometimes in camera cropping and using different metering modes has made the photo better. Other times it hasn't, but the majority of the time it has helped using in camera cropping when the subject is far or when you just can't get any closer. Because in wildlife photography, sometimes you just can't get close enough. You might be eight meters away, sometimes 10 meters away from your subject and your subject is so small. Then you have to go home and crop it. Well, when we use in-camera cropping, we're cropping in, we're getting closer to our subject. So the whole camera is going to help us get a better photo. I'd like to hear your thoughts and feedback on this subject. Leave it in the comments. Do you believe in in-camera cropping? Have you tried in-camera cropping? So thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, if you found value in it, give it a big thumbs up. Stay safe, enjoy wildlife photography, and I'll see you next time.